Sunday. All day long. This is Sunday. It's going to be March 21st in the year 2024. This is Sunday Sermon. Sermon about lostness. L O S T N E S S. Yes, my friend, this is part two of Jesus' last months. That's the subject. Jesus' last months, part two. I want you to be patient with me because today's message is from the choice gold mine in the Bible. God help me as I try to pull the mother load. The mother load in the gold mine is the richest portion of the gold mine. And that's where I am in God's word today. Part two, Jesus' last months. They are reported in the entirety of Luke chapter number 15. They are, however, preceded by uh, Luke 14 miracle and incident an encounter that Jesus had at the supper table of one of the uh, leaders of the Pharisees. And here's what happened. Jesus was invited to dinner by a Pharisee, one of the chief Pharisees. And the scripture don't tell us who he was. But I believe it was Nicodemus, although he was the highest of a ranking spiritual officer in the Sanhedrin council. But they were at dinner at this big shot's house. And Jesus had an encounter with a man that was sick. It was a Sunday dinner on the Sabbath. And the man had a condition identified in the Bible as dropsy. And that condition is identified and characterized by a swelling in the body, a swelling in a collection of fluid indicative of uh, heart disease, heart failure. But Jesus healed that man right there in the chief of Pharisees' house on the Sabbath day. And I just want to give you some background information to kind of set the stage for today's message. Uh, essentially, today's message is about three parables that occurred in the life of Jesus in his last ministry, the three parables that he gave in the last month of his ministry. I might or, uh, develop them in detail or I might just give them a slight brush stroke. But the parables that Jesus gave uh, were number one, lost sheep. The second parable, the lost coin. The third parable, the lost son. Uh, all in, all found in Luke chapter number 15. But my friend, there's so much more 
there's so much more. And I just beg your indulgence as I try to get this mother load up to the surface. Uh, I'll give you Jesus' uh, parables, highlights from his parables and his message contained in this gold mine. There was a lost sheep. There's a seeking savior. That's the second one. The lost sheep is number one. Our uh, first subject that Jesus spoke on. Lost sheep. Analogous to lost people. But the second point had to do with a seeking savior. Number three, Jesus hit upon the soul winner's joy. They're, see, they're, they're, they're sequentially laid out here. <laughs> the organization of this 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke is just downright amazing. Number four, Jesus talked about the parable of the lost coin. Huh, the parable of the lost son. Then he got on the subject of moral bankruptcy. Ha, that would happen to the son. <laughs> uh, uh, and a lost son inescapably produces moral bankruptcy. But let me go on to number seven, where Jesus hit upon the insanity of sin. We see that in this 15th chapter. But the Lord wants me to pause here and tell you that the, under the insanity of sin, we must understand that little sins lead to big sins. You start out doing a little wrong, and you're going to end up doing big wrong. That, my friend, is the insanity of sin, which, number eight, Jesus mentions, the great decision. Ha. Bankruptcy, insanity of sin, and then a great decision ha. ought to be made. Ha. The power... In, the, in that parable of the prodigal son, Jesus uh, uses these words, puts these words in the prodigal son, in the lost son's mouth. These are the words. I will arise and go to my father's house. Hmm. What a great decision. So many, too many, too many, many, many need to arise, get up, come home to your father. Then Jesus talked about returning to God. That was number nine. Number 10, he mentioned that robe of righteousness. Hmm. That's what the lost son are, uh, received. A robe of righteousness. A robe that covered the bad odor that he picked up uh, in the pig pen. And a robe of honor. All given to him after he returned home. Now, if you come home to God today, he got the robe, the robe of righteousness, but he's going to slip that ring on your finger. <laughs> I got three more points to cover and then I'm going to uh, try to 
capsulize this entire message. Jesus went on to speak about spiritual resurrection. Drawn from the parable of the prodigal son. He had two sons. But the one that was overcome by the insanity of sin, the moral bankruptcy, the one that made that great decision, he died. Whew. In a strange land. Uh, dissipating his substance and riders living. You got to live this thing, my friend. And he was dead. Not physically dead, but spiritually dead. Jesus ha, spoke about the possibility and in the inevitability of a spiritual resurrection. But he wasn't through with that. I got two more points. He talked about a complaint, the complaint that occurred in the life of the prodigal son, a complaint that was uttered by his own blood brother. Hmm. Think of that. Finally, Jesus illustrated in this parable of the prodigal son, he illustrated the unbrotherly attitude. There's some lost brothers out there, some brothers out there and sisters too that are spiritually dead and need to do what the lost son did. He talked to himself. He was at wit's end corner. He was hungry, physically hungry, and wanted to eat whatever he was feeding to the hogs. He, he was willing to eat hogs, pig food. But something happened. Now, he was at bottom, no question, he was at bottom. Morally bankrupt. Financially bankrupt. Biologically bankrupt. But something happened. He came to himself. The Bible says he came to himself. If you're beside yourself, you need to come to yourself. Me too. I'm not exempt from this uh, scathing uh, uh, gospel. But it's all in Luke chapter number 15. The gold mine. Whew. Incidentally, of the 32 verses in that 15th chapter, the Gospel of Luke, all but three verses are printed in red ink, which means that they were the words of Jesus, all except three verses. And that was the first three verses. In those verses, we are told who Jesus was talking to. And you know something? I'm speaking to the same class that Jesus was talking to. In Matthew 15, and in Luke 15. Number one, Bible says that there were fault finders there in the crowd that Jesus was speaking to. 
Now he's no longer in the house of the one of the chief of the Pharisees. That was in Luke, 13, Luke 14. But he was talking to fault finders, Pharisees. And he was also talking to sanctimonious scribes. Hmm. And finally, he was talking to people that were eager to hear the truth. And these, my friends, are the people that Jesus was talking to, the people that I'm talking to today. I'm going to let you go. But I'm going to give you scripture to feast upon one verse out of that 15th chapter. You got the gold mine. All you got to do is go dig in it. Luke 15. But I just want to give you part of what Jesus said in that last verse of Luke 15. He said, This thy brother was dead. And I want to cry. He's alive again. Whew. My friend, do you feel like you need a spiritual resurrection? Do you feel like you're lost ball in high weeds? Are you groping and looking and longing and searching for something that's going to last or searching for our uh, spiritual truth? If that's the case with you, here's what you need to do. Take your business to God in prayer saying to him, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for all the wrongs that I've done and I ask you to forgive me. I now accept your free gift of eternal life. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. And thank you, my master, for the new life that I will enjoy in Jesus Christ. From this uh, uh, Sunday, from this 20, uh, uh, first day of April 2024, from this day forward, I choose to follow you. I follow you out of the insanity of sin. Follow you out of moral bankruptcy. Follow you into spiritual resurrection. Hmm. My friend, now unto him is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Now unto him, the only wise God, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, both right now, henceforth, and evermore. Just want to see you in the evermore. Just want to see you in the celestial city where there will be our, uh, no more sickness, no more crying, where every day will be like Sunday. Sabbath will have no end. No need for the sun, for the Lamb of God. The sun is the light thereof. Twelve gates in the city, built upon twelve foundations. I just want you to come out of that lostness, brother. My master, bless the tie that binds our hearts 
today in Christian love as we fight our way out of lostness. Come on home with the gold mine.